The 80s were a strange time. Looking back and what we now know about addiction, the government's solution to the problem was laughable and ridiculous at best. First Lady Nancy Reagan's famous saying when it came to drugs wasn't a quote, just say no. The saying didn't seem to resonate with young people. In fact, my favorite quote about just say no would come from Steven Tyler, Verosmith, who told the LA Times, bless Nancy Reagan's heart, but you can't just say no. That's like telling a manic depressant to just cheer up. By 1986 and 1987, it seemed like people realized that the Just Say No slogan wasn't working, and the LA Times would publish an op-ed by record executive Danny Goldberg, who would later go on to manage Nirvana. He would write in his op-ed, and I quote, For millions of teenage rock fans grappling with the temptations of drug and alcohol abuse, Nancy Reagan's Just Say No just does not work. Yet many of these same fans seem to be responding to a series of television ads made by some of the country's biggest rock stars because these people talk in their language. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the Rock Against Drug ads that aired on MTV. The 80s would see rock and popular music, as well as Hollywood, under the microscope for what social conservatives claimed was a glorification of sex and drugs. In fact, President Ronald Reagan, for example, repeatedly attacked the film and music industries saying the music industry, and I quote, has a responsibility to keep those who glorify drug use away from minors. His wife, Nancy Reagan, in addition to her Just Say No slogan, urged school-age kids to sign anti-drug pledges and even attacked the Madonna film Desperately Seeking Susan, showing Madonna smoking a joint. Danny Goldberg's op-ed would criticize the Reagan administration, writing, and I quote, such criticism is consistent with the administration's pattern of combating drug use, attacking symptoms without getting to the cause. Many rock stars back in the day refused to work with the White House's Just Say No campaign because as Danny Goldberg would put it, and I quote, they believe its condescending tone conflicts with what they feel is the emotional honesty of rock and roll. The Rock Against Drug campaign, or RAD, would be established by record company executives and according to the Chicago Tribune, the Department of Justice for the state of California. Goldberg would look back at its formation, writing in the LA Times, Rock Against Drugs was created after I told Attorney General John Van de Kamp's drug abuse panel that attacks on rock and roll by authority figures hurt the fight against drug abuse. In the last decade, there's not been one single pro-drug hit compared to the many anti-drug songs produced. The thinking behind RAD is that America's youth would be more inclined to listen to those they look up to and those who have been there rather than authority figures. The RAD campaign would enlist a who's who at the time of rock and roll, including Lou Reed, Vince Neil, John Bon Jovi, and Gene Simmons, Ted Nugent, and Belinda Carlisle, to name a few. Here's a snippet of some of the RAD ads that ran in the 80s. Yeah, this is backstage at a rock and roll show. There's no drugs. It's just Nothing. a good time. We don't need drugs. We got rock and roll. Yeah. Rock and rolls are high. Yeah. I'm John Bon Jovi, and I've been given a script to talk to you about drugs, rock and roll, having fun, a good time, and all that good stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, drugs is not a part of my everyday routine. It's not everyday fun. It's not good for you, all right? So listen, think twice before you do drugs, because there ain't no winners out there doing it. Hi, my name's Steve Jones. I used to play guitar with a band called The Sex Pistols. A good friend of mine, Sid Vicious, died from drugs. I nearly died from drugs. Drugs suck. You know, I've been playing rock and roll for a lot of years. And I've done it all. Now I do it without drugs. Hey, don't get me wrong, I still party with the best of them. But now I do it clean. You know, I'm on top of everything I do. Belinda Carlisle would later reveal that despite appearing in the ads, she was struggling with addiction at the time. She wouldn't get clean until 2005. But even Steve Jones, who appears in the RAD commercials, seemed to be somewhat mixed on his message, telling the LA Times, When I was 16, I wouldn't have stopped doing drugs even if Jimi Hendrix had told me to. I didn't stop till I was ready. But I think kids can get the picture a lot quicker if they hear that it's not happening to do drugs. And I think the punishments for drug crime should be more severe, he would say. As to how effective the ads were, Goldberg would write in his op-ed, and I quote, it's impossible to measure exactly the effect of any advertising campaign, but letters from fans have been encouraging. One wrote to MTV, which regularly runs the spots, that the commercial by Bon Jovi encouraged him to stop doing drugs, saying, those guys were the only people I would listen to. They changed my life around. While another fan wrote about rocker Ronnie Dio, teachers can preach for hours about how bad drugs are, and I still went out and got high. But man, once I heard you say how stupid drugs are, I never touched them again. So let me know in the comments section, guys. Do you guys remember seeing these ads in the 80s if you were a kid back then? And what were your thoughts on them? And did they at all change what you did in your life? That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. And we'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.